Hey team, welcome back to Adaptive Fitness Fun. This is session 18, and today's our skills based, so I thought it'd be quite nice to do something slightly different. We're gonna go through a mobility session. We're gonna be really focusing on stretching out for our chest, for our shoulders, for our back muscles, which we call our lats, a lot of trunk mobility movement, a little bit through the hips as well, uh, and then we're gonna finish it off by doing a little bit of activation. Activation up for certain muscle groups, um, so it's mainly going to be the back of our shoulders, which is really good for posture, posterior chain at the back. And we're also going to work in the glutes and a little bit on the core there as well. So it's going to be a slightly different session. It's going to be a lot more chilled. This is a routine I go through definitely once a day, sometimes even twice a day. Uh, I find that the way that I walk because of my, my leg, I get quite tight through my lower back and quite tight through my abdominals. So this is a really nice little mobility session that I like to go through. I then find the activation after I've done the mobility just really wakes me up and like I said it gives me that good posture, keeps my shoulders back, keeps my, my glutes, my bum muscles really active which is for me it's so important for keeping nice and strong through my socket and staying uh, really tight within the socket meaning that I can walk um, a lot more efficiently, I don't dip quite as much so yeah, so I think it's a really nice session. I hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, it's not gonna be uh, very taxing. It's not gonna be very hard work. We're definitely not gonna get out of breath or sweaty. You just need a little bit of space on the floor um, and perhaps get a yoga mat or some sort of soft carpet. That might be better for you, but today I'm just gonna do it on the, on the floor. Um, and yeah, I hope you guys enjoy. So we haven't got a time or anything like that. It's pretty relaxed. Okay, so our first exercise is a uh, crucifix knee roll, okay? So I'm gonna talk you through it uh, nice and slowly, and we're gonna be counting the repetitions today rather than going with a time, okay? So find a bit of space on the floor. Just make sure you can see me. And if you can, bend your knees, and you want to try and hold your feet together. And you've got to lie on your back, hands onto your ribs, and just help. You don't want your ribs to Push that lower back into the ground, hands onto your ribs, and just slowly rock your knees over to one side, just as far as I'll go, so you're not letting your ribs or your shoulders come off, you're keeping your back and your shoulders on the floor. Let your legs roll over, and roll over to the other side, and then same again. I'm just going to repeat this. So the reason it's called a crucifix is because you can have your arms out here, and it's a knee roll, knee tucking. Just feel the movement. And we're doing roughly around 30 reps, 30 repetitions, 30 rows. So that's about 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. For me, this is a really nice little mobility kind of stretch. Bit of, nice bit of movement through my lower back, through my hips. Feels really good. Bit of a release. Nice, couple more. You should start to feel like you're loosening up. I certainly got better range of motion. Like my knees are pretty much touching the floor now, even with my shoulders on the ground still. Nice, and of course, if you can't bend your knees on this one, you can just twist your feet over. It's not quite as effective, so if you can bend your knees, it is not better. The next one we're going to go for is knees to one side. We've done these ones before, this is called crocodile arms. Your shoulders want to be stacked on top of each other, and your hips want to be on top of each other as well, stacked. Hands on top of each other just like this, and you go crocodile arms. So imagine this is the mouth of a crocodile, and you go all the way over, follow it with your head. Try and touch the floor that's behind you, follow it with your head, over, and back down. So you're keeping that bottom hand on the ground, keeping the shoulders and the knees together what we call stacked, and just rotating that shoulder back, following with the head, following with the hands, up and over. And we're going for roughly 10 of these. And again, I find this a really nice release on my lower back. And through my mid-back and a little bit of my upper back as well, actually. Nice. And do one more. 
Okay, now we're going to do something called snow angels. So you're going to stay in this position. You're going to use this top hand, stretch forwards, and then you're going to draw a nice big circle right in the round. And then back. Bring your hands together, stretch forward, nice big circle. And again, we're going for 10 of these. Nice big circle. Again, follow them with your head. Nice big stretch. So this is called snow angels. So we think about how we make a snow angel on the ground in the snow. I've never done that before. So this exercise is simulating that. Yes. And again, you should feel that really a little bit more underneath the arm on this one as well. Nice big stretch as you follow that over. Again, roughly 10 each side. I don't know how many we've done, but I guess I'm going to do two. I'm guessing we've done eight, nine, one more, and ten. Excellent. Okay, guys. So we're going to move on to the other side. So roll yourself over. You don't have to turn sides like I did. You can just roll over. I'm just doing this one because I'll see you guys. Okay, we're going to start with our crocodile arms. So we're going to sit over. We're going to keep those knees. With your shoulders stacked on top of each other, with your hips stacked on top of each other. Follow with your head all the way over. And we're going for 10 of these as well. Two. Three. And again, you should just feel the your mobility increases, the range of motion that you can go. Good. Feels really nice. I like it. I'm just doing it through feel. Roughly around 10. One more. There we go. And then we've got a snow angel. So slide that hand forward, pull it up and around. One. Two. So they're working the back of the legs. So you think about sitting up nice and tall. And again, we've done this one before where you use your hands and push yourself forward. But today, we don't need to do that if you don't want to. I'm just going to reach forward and try and touch those toes. Pull myself down a little bit. Relax there. And we're going to go again. And again, of course, we're doing 10 reps. So it should be 10 reps of all of these. So you can use your hands here just to push yourself forward. But today I'm feeling quite flexible. So I'm going to use my arms to just pull my toes down and just ease me forward even more. Nice, really good. Try to keep those knees on the ground if you can. You don't want to see them bending up or anything. So you pull those toes towards you. Both feet want to use if you can see my feet now. Both feet are pointing towards the sky. You don't want to let them fall out, so keep them pointing towards the sky. Stretch. Again, I've lost count, but roughly around 10 of these. I still a couple more. You should feel the stretch in the back of your legs, the hamstrings, maybe your calf muscles as well, which is the lower leg. Maybe a little bit of your lower back. Maybe a little bit of your upper back as well, depending on how tight you are. Okay. Legs apart. And this one, I like to just use my hands to keep my back nice and straight and just ease myself forward ever so slightly. Where we haven't really got a, a leverage point to pull on this one, I'm going to use my hands and just arch myself forward. 
forward, my hands up, simply keeping my back nice and straight. My shoulders on the side, legs apart as far as I go. Hands just keep my back straight, and they just push me forward. So instead of kind of doing this, where you lose all that tension through the back of the legs, and your back is rounded, you want to keep your back straight and keep forward. Sometimes it's quite hard to get that extra stretch. So just here, and a little push. You just ease up and then go again. And pull those toes towards you. And again, roughly around 10 for these as well. Nice, okay. So we're going to keep our legs apart. And this time I'm going over to one side. And for me on this one, I just like to brace myself so I'm not collapsing onto it. I brace myself, brace my back, and reach forward on that toe. And again, we're just doing short, little tension pulls. So the reason for the, the reason that I don't just hold an exercise is that you shouldn't really be stretching cold muscles. So when I say cold muscles, when we do our warm ups, you notice that your heart rate starts to elevate, it starts to go up. You might notice your breathing rate starts to go up with that as well. And your body temperature change, you start to get a little bit hot, a little bit sweaty. And your internally, your, your blood is flowing a lot faster from your body. Uh, your joints are starting to loosen up, and your muscles are, are what we say getting warm. And if you stretch a cold muscle, so if you stretch a muscle, and we're going to go on to the other side now, if you stretch a, a muscle that hasn't had a warm up, then you risk sometimes injuring, hurting your muscles. And sometimes that might be because of the joint, it might be because of the tendons or the ligaments, or sometimes it's just the muscle just doesn't like being overstretched when it's cold. Kind of like an elastic band. Imagine picking up an elastic band on a cold day, and you pick it up, you go stretch it, and it just snaps. Whereas if it's warm, you get a little bit more. You learn about a little more subtle for it. Um, your muscles are very similar to that. So that's why we go through warm-ups, and that's why I'm just doing these very short little stretches, rather than go straight in deep and trying to hold a particular movement. Okay, guys, so it's just to eliminate that risk of injury if I do that. So we're going to go for the teapot stretch, over, nice big stretch, go under and over. And some of these exercises, some of these movements now are just getting a little bit more extreme. So the range of motion is getting a little bit more exaggerated. We started by just rolling around on the floor with our knees tucked into our to our stomachs, and this was just simply, it's quite a small range of motion we're going through, it was to mobilize. But now that we're a little bit warmer, we've gone through our warm up, now we've got the option, the opportunity to really kind of stretch out that stomach and that lat. Oh, a nice big stretch, and I can really feel it again in my lower back, which is a place I really need to stretch out, like I said, because of my walking. Okay, on the other side. Oh, really like this. Again, roughly did about 10 reps. I'm not really counting, I'm talking too much. <laughs> Let's do a few more. My range of motion is nowhere near as good on this side. I'm a lot tighter here, so I can't get this hand anywhere near as far under. I can't see up to the roof, but even this hand, I'm trying to get it over to my leg. Compared to this side, where I'm a lot more smooth, a lot more supple, this side needs a little bit more work. And you'll notice that when you have an amputation, whether that be lower limb, upper limb, your body becomes imbalanced. Um, and we're not designed to be that way. So uh, we will have tight spaces. You might experience a little bit of pain sometimes, especially if you are very active. If you've been following the series, you've been very active. So you deserve to take some time out and have a nice stretch like we are today. Okay, really nice guys. So, uh, where are we? We're gonna roll to our points. And we're gonna go 
you're going to stretch up and then pull the head at the top and back down. Yeah. And you should feel this through what we call the hip flexors. Hip flexors are the top of your quads or the top of your thighs and they reach into near your abdominals. You might feel just a bit of a pull there. And that head lift at the very end really helps to just kind of pull out through the, the tummy muscles, the, the abdominals. Again, we're doing 10. Okay, guys, so we're going to move on to a little bit of activation now. So let's start with our glutes. So from all arms to your back. And again, if you've got the option of bending both your knees, this is going to be uh, the better option. Um, if not, then you're going to need to find a box or a sofa because you haven't got a sofa around me today. I'm at a different house. So you're going to put both your feet onto the sofa like we did you know, a couple of sessions ago. So if you're not quite sure, uh, perhaps rewind two sessions ago. And you'll see us doing glute bridges onto a sofa. That's what we're going to do now, but without the sofa. So we're going to think about pushing through your heels and driving your hips up into the air. And let's go for 10 reps. Three, you should feel this in your bum. Four, five, six, seven. Roll onto your side and so imagine you know, the big climbs at the beach that you see, and you're going to make that position with your legs. So, if you haven't got the option of bending both your legs, you can do this straight, straight legs. But if you have, then we're going to bend our knees and just open up and back down, open up and back down. You should feel this tension through your bum. And again, of course, we're going for 10. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And we're going to swap sides. So feet on top of each other. And just open that leg out. One, two, three. Again, if you haven't got the option of straight bending your knees, you can do this straight up and down. Exactly the same, you'll find it a lot harder than the clamshells there. So we're trying to do this feet on top of each other. Nine, ten, very good, okay. So, we are going to lie on my front. I'm going to show you this way. Hands out in front of you, and you lift both hands up, okay? And we want to keep your your feet onto the ground. I'll show you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And that is tricky. It is hard. Can you see that? Let's get that back. Okay, now we're going to do it again, but slightly further, slightly wider with your hands. Two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Then we're going to go even wider. This time your thumbs are going to go up. Say hello, mate. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So you should feel that working. Back of the shoulders, like I said, it's really good for what you call your posterior chain. So think about your posture, think about shoulders, back, standing up tall, chest out. So it's really good for your posterior chain, the back, your back muscles, your shoulder muscles. Our very last exercise, guys, last one, we're going to do a plank. And we're going to go for 45 seconds. So our time on my watch. So a plank, you can do it either on your hands, or you can do it on your elbows. It's entirely up to you. I'm going to go on my elbows, as long as I can see my watch. 
we are going to go in five seconds time. Get yourselves ready guys. Two, one, 45 seconds, off you go. So remember with this one guys, we haven't got the option of using both our arms. We can pad one side up, we can get some cushions, we can get a box to lean on, and you just want to make sure you're not sagging down, your bum's not up in the air, nice straight line. It's called the plank. Think about a plank of wood. Keep those legs nice and straight, really drive from both legs, engage that core, tuck that hip underneath, so you're not letting it arch up. Hip tucked right underneath, keep that stomach engaged. And where are we? We have. Where are we? 10 seconds. 10 seconds left. Keep it nice and strong. And in three, two, one. Guys. Ho, ho, ho. I might let you into a little secret. I think that was a minute plank, not 45 seconds. So if you held that, congratulations. That was a 60 second plank. Well done, really good stuff. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Like I said, I do this every single day. I benefit a lot from it. I find that it really helps to relieve any tension or any stress or any pain in my, particularly my back, my lower back, especially on my right hand side. Um, and also just like those activation ones at the end, like I said, it just helps to keep your shoulders back. So like I said, your posterior chain, work at the back, and you know, think about your posture. So it keeps you this. If, you, if you're not doing that, you can look like rounded, and you just get a little bit uncomfortable. You want to think nice and tall. But also working on the core, and work, oh, sorry, working on the glutes, and working on the core as well. Guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, this has been a different style of workout to our usual Thursday skill session. But equally as beneficial. I hope you got a lot from it. Enjoy the rest of your week and I'll see you Tuesday. Take care guys.